so um i'll start talking we're gonna start actually solving anything till 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 six then but um let's start with um i'll just show you some of the questions that i'm planning on going through and if anybody has any you know maybe feels like they're good questions or if maybe you know i'll get some some input from you if you think it's a waste of time i don't really know like i was kind of struggling to put questions together for this because I'm in like an interesting situation where I have not done very much of the practice, but I, I feel like I understand everything, <laughs> hopefully. So we'll, we'll put that to the test here, for sure. Everything that was sent to me, I, I, I am confident that I can solve. So I think uh, we'll start with this. We'll start with this question. Um, so a synchronous counter starts with that state. What will the state... So, okay, so that's the... <laughs> can, I, can I crop this? So that's the solution, but let me just show... I want to show you how we get to the solution for... What's the sequence of the, of the bits after... Um, after four clocks, uh, you know, what, what does it have at the end there? So of course, you know, the solution is there, but the answer is there, but not the solution. So we, we will talk about that. Is there a way to crop this? No, there's no way to crop this, but we'll just, that's fine. Um, so we'll start with that question. And then I have some questions about, you know, turning a timing diagram into a state assigned table. I have some questions about uh, turning a circuit into a state diagram. This one's turn a circuit into a state diagram. Um, and then I have some VHDL questions, which were sent to me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Um, so we'll do a couple of those maybe just like, okay, what, look at this VHDL code. What does it do approximately, right? Uh, which is probably what the, what we're going to have on the exam. Uh, something similar like, to that effect. Um, and yeah. Oh, and one more thing to mention before I start, I, I, uh, I'm sick. So I was, I got, I got sick on Friday, not COVID, although we had to get COVID tested because it was, it was similar to COVID. Um, but so if I cough a little bit or I, if I, um, uh, well, if I cough, that's all that, that's actually the only thing I have still is, is, is a cough. So, um, I may have to mute for a second and cough. I, that's, that's the only thing, uh, but hopefully it doesn't offend anybody. Um, I will drink some water to good health. <clears throat> Yeah, where do you get these questions? Um, people send, just random questions people send. I have no idea. Thank you very much for the good wishes for my health. <laughs> yes, it's being recorded. It is being recorded. Um, let's check <laughs> if I'm recording. <laughs> yes, I am recording. So, uh, you know, I'm notoriously bad at... Uh, getting... Oh, I'm sorry, Hashem. I'm sorry I offended you that, that I'm sick. Um... Okay, so it is six ten. So let's get going on this. I just want to make sure that in the recording, you guys are there. Yes. Okay. So if anyone talks, feel free to unmute at any moment. If you want to talk to me about anything, well, obviously related to this stuff. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to unmute and we can talk about it. So uh, let's begin here. And again, you know, yeah, you can you can ask questions in the chat. You can ask questions on on here. It's really up to you. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let me clear my throat a little bit before we start. So. Um, we have a synchronous counter that starts with state zero, zero, zero. And the question is, what will the state be after four clock pulses? So what will the state of the circuit be? So uh, I'm going to take a little screenshot because I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take just the screenshot of this part here and, and extend it a little bit just so we can really see what's going on here. So first of all, all the elements of what's, we, we have to understand what's, what's everything happening here. So we have three D flip-flops, right? These are each D flip-flops. Um, the D flip flop takes in some data. That's why it's called a D flip flop. It takes in some data and then it outputs that data, right? On, on the clock, right? So, um, uh, here it would output the, the, the inverse of it, right? It would in for inverse Q. So if we take a look at my notes for a second here, you want to see, you know, these are D flip flops. So I just want to, you know, absolutely. You know, it's good. It's good to have some paper that, that verifies what you're saying. So if we look here, there's a D latch, da -da -da, D flip flop. There we go. And so there's a truth table for the D flip flop somewhere. <laughs> You'd be good to find a truth table. There you go. There's the tr truth table for the D flip flop. So it's good to just like remember this, obviously have this whenever you're working with flip flops, know exactly what its function is. So if the clock is one and the data is one, right? If the clock, if the clock, if it's clocked and data is one, then, uh, um, sorry, that's actually, a, that's, a, this isn't exactly the same thing because we, ha it's a edge triggered. So is there an edge triggered one that I have here? Yeah, I have an edge triggered one. Right, so that goes into follow to one. Right, so very similar. If I just make the truth table quickly, obviously I'm I'm sure you know I'm not gonna spend much time on this, but you know if we have um the uh the the clock C L K and we have D here, right? So the idea is, and then if I want to say Q, right? So if the clock is zero, then then this doesn't change, right? Q. So this is Q of T plus one. This is just Q of T. That doesn't change, right? And it doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter what D is, right? So don't care here. But if the clock 
if we're clocking, essentially it's hard to make a truth table because it's really an excitation table, but if we're clocking, then if this is one or zero, then this becomes one or zero, right? It becomes whatever it is. So if we're clocking or if we're not, because it is edge triggered. So from here, now that we know that, what a, what a D flip-flop is, when I start, the circuit has a value zero, zero, zero here. Right, zero, 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 and I and I'm gonna assume that you know they don't cross over here. This isn't a cross; like they don't touch there. The two lines, right? They're they're crossing over. So the input here is zero, right? Input here is zero. Input here is zero. Input here is zero. Right. Um. So when I, um, yeah, I was gonna say, shouldn't the input be one because we're outputting the uh, the uh, yes, the sorry, complement? yes, yeah. yes, it should be one. <laughs> Good point. Uh, that would that would change things. So we're inputting the we have the complement coming out here. So the D flip flop has two different outputs. One which is just you would just call it your Q, and this is always the complement of it. So the complement of it is coming in. So our input here is going to be a one. So now let's say I'm going to clock the circuit. So we start with zero zero zero, and that comes from let's let's draw it here. Zero zero and zero here, right? Or zero 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 is the is the Q values. So then it's a one coming out of here. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. This is a one, but the actual state of the circuit is like this. So this is Q0, Q1, I'll, I'll draw it at the top, Q0, Q1, Q2, right? So then next, let's say I clock the circuit. So this is going to, this, this right here is going to keep track of how many times I've clocked the circuit. So number, number of times clocked. So if I clock once now, then the data from the D side is going to go into the Q side. So it's going to become a one here. Zero is going to move across here. It's going to be a zero. Zero is going to move across here. It's going to become a zero, right? Right. So it's still a zero, but like it didn't change. But really, what's happening is that this zero is moving up across here, right? This zero is moving up to the other side of the D flip flop, and so the output from the negative edge, the negative side of the D flip flop, not negative edge, but negative side of the D flip flop, is going to still be one, right? So our input here is still one. Now, when I clock a second time, right, um, the you know. The current state after the first clock is one, zero, zero, right? So now when I clock a second time, that one is going to move over. So Q1 is going to be one. That one is going to move in. So that's going to be one there too. And this zero is going to move over. So it's going to be a zero, right? So we have this as our next step. Okay, so colors are going to help out a little bit here, right? So if, if that that one's there, that's, that's the one there, right? And if that's zero, that zero is there, right? Everything's shifting over. So now our, st our circuit is in the state. It's in one, uh, one, one, zero. So the output here is still one. So it's still a one coming in here, right? And so what's going to happen again is everything's going to shift over. So it's going to be a one here, a one here. And then, right, we're going to have a one coming in still, right? Still a one coming in. So I'm going to put that there. So again, let me, let me repeat that, right? Clock the circuit. This one moves over. This one moves over this one moves over and importantly not like this moves over here and this moves over here like sorry this moves over here and then you clock this one and then you move this over and then you clock this one they all clock at the same time okay they're all synchronous right that's that's the point is they're all synchronous here right so we don't just move this and then calculate this one and move this and then calculate this one we we move this over and then re record what that next one's going to be and then we go back to the current one and move that over if that this is a johnson count yeah this is going to be a johnson count if anyone has any questions about what I'm saying there, feel free to ask. I can explain differently, but you know, okay. Sounds like we're good. So from here, right, uh, it's going to be slightly different because look now what's going to happen if I remove all this, right? If I remove these arrows, right? So the current state of the circuit is one, 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 right? One, one, one. What that means out of this output, we now have a zero, right? Zero is coming out of there. And so the input to the whole circuit is a zero now. So when I clock it again, that was our third clock. So now I'm going to go to our fourth clock. When I clock it again, that zero is going to come in. That one is going to move over. That one is going to move over. And that one's going to move over. Right? And we have something that looks like this. Right? So the zero is going to come in to take the Q1, Q0 spot. This one is going to take the Q1 spot. And this one is going to take the Q2 spot. And this one doesn't go anywhere. Right? So we have that. Okay. And the question was, uh, what is the output of the circuit after four clocks? So there we go. One, two, three, four. So I have Q0, Q1, Q2 is 0, 1, 1. And they just have it, they just have it backwards. 
I I just Q that that's Q zero. That's Q one. That's Q two. So it's the same thing. It, they just have the order of their things different. But that is the same. And so you can see that the circuit goes from zero 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 to one zero zero to one one zero to one 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 to zero one one. And so this is the Johnson counter, right? Because it's cycling all these things over. Okay. So that's essentially that. Any questions about that? If you're any part of you know confused about any part there, let me know. I'm happy to explain more. If you know. So if I if I ever go too fast in certain situations, just let me know. Because I you know it's hard to gauge how fast I should go. But yeah. Obviously I should try to make these lines a little straighter. There we go. That's better. Okay. So sounds like everybody's good. Let's move on to the next question that I've got. It will be. Let's see. Um, I have, I think this is a good one. So given the following timing diagram with the clock signal that's given, okay, input waveform X and output signal Z. Okay. So we have a clock input output. Okay. And, uh, you know, th these two state variables. So the, this variable here, I'm going to just write it a little bit bigger so everybody can see properly. Let me just sort of cover it so that I can write it on top. So CLK is right there. Okay. That's X. Uh, that's Y naught. You know what? I should just use purple for all of them. Y naught. And that's Y1. And that right here is Z. Okay, so given this um, timing diagram, try to figure out what the, well, the, the question doesn't even, it's not, it's not even part of here, but it derive the state assigned table. Okay, find the state assigned table. State assigned state assigned table yeah um so um we will okay so oh, that's the answer <laughs> uh i didn't mean, didn't mean to show that on the screen um just want to make sure i can open it so to do this to do the state assigned table right remember that the state assigned table has first of all on the left hand side it has our present state okay present state Okay, the present state is determined by some y1. Let me make sure I'm matching matching this. Yeah, y1. Just want to make sure I'm matching the order of the solution. y1, y2. Okay, because those are the two variables that are controlling our state. And that's something I, I didn't mention here yet, is that they told us, you know, which combination of y1 and y2, sorry, y1 and y0, um, give us different states. So 0, 0, if y1 is 0 and y0 is 0, we're in state 0. Otherwise, you know, there's all these other combinations. So there's a bunch of combinations for present states. So I'll say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are our possible states, right? And we, we happen to have four different states here, right? So 0, 0 is S0, right? 0, 1 is S1. 1, 0 is S2. And 1, 1 is S3, right? So that, that's given in the question here. Make that a little bigger. I'll just highlight that to just help emphasize. So that is given in the question comfortable so far i'm going to really try to make these lines as straight as possible but straight lines are not my not my forte there we go a little help from the thing okay so so far i've just created the present state section then we're going to have our next state section whoops we're going to have our next state section okay the next state will always depend on the input right we have a one column for w0 one column for w1 right so i'm going to call it y1 y0 y1 y0 right there's our next state okay right and so we'll fill this in using information from the table can't fill it in just yet but what i want to do next is my output and so from this table i don't know like there probably is some way to figure out if it's a well there's probably the way to figure out if it's a melee or a more machine is by making this table and that's a pretty good way to figure it out Maybe someone who's really keen can can take a look right away. But I, there's a melee. there's a way to a without knowing. Machine. Yeah, go for it. It's a melee machine. It's a melee like, machine. Yeah. Yeah. On the one, two, three, around the between the third and fourth clock cycle, you can see that the the states don't change, but the input changes and the output changes as well. So you can yeah. see that it depends on the input signal. So it's a melee machine. That's true. And so that's what I was saying. If you have a keen eye, there's probably some way to just look at it and figure it out. So there you go. There's the there's the way to look at it and figure it out. But it's actually not even necessary, I don't think, to 
uh, to even be able to tell right off the bat. Just assume it's a melee machine, right? Uh, a melee machine, yes. Assume it's a melee machine right off the bat, okay? For, uh, and you, you, you make your two columns, w equals zero, zero, w equals one, right? And this is your, this is your output section. Um, and we only have a one variable, so it's just z, right? And then if at the end, your two columns are the same, that means that your output does not depend on the input. If that makes sense, right? If you end up with zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, that means that the the output of the state doesn't the, the output of the whole um, uh, circuit does not depend on the on the input. So uh, then you can see that it's a more tight machine, right? So for now, I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen, right? I mean, it's not. Okay, so never mind. I do know because because you know we saw that part there. But you know, assuming I didn't know, right? I would just start by just making this making this like this, right? I would just say, okay, well, I don't know, but if at the end these two columns are the same, then it's a more type machine. Okay, so given this, uh, I think I'm gonna try to squeeze things together a little bit, or maybe I'll try to just make this smaller because I want to have everything on the same screen and not have to you know scroll up and down all the time. So let's see, can I do that? There we go. That's good. Or probably. Different, whatever I'll, that that looks good. So now, let's take a look at some uh, at some you know just try to fill in some information here. So um, at the first clock, because we want to look at you know what's happening at the clocks. Right? Uh, so sorry, the, just real quick. Yeah. The input for the question is X, but you have the input. Oh yeah, w, sorry. I'll uh, just call it W. Whatever. Okay. I'll just call it W. So it's you know, con more consistent with what we've been studying in in lecture. Um, but thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. So now, if I'm in state zero zero, so let, well, actually, let's not even say if we're in state zero zero. Let's look at the first clock, right? What state we're in. So we're coming in, right, at zero and zero here. So we are in state state zero here, right? Zero and zero on these two. Remember, those two are the things that are controlling our, um, they're controlling our present state, right? So at the clock, right, at the clock, we go, um, uh, our next state becomes um uh, one sorry uh, yes one zero right so from zero zero we go to one zero but what was the input the input was one so the input to the whole function was one our state was zero zero and then it became one zero so we're going to put a one zero there right again i'm getting one zero from the fact that we have you know one zero here right i'll write it here one zero 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 our input was one. So input one, we go from zero, zero to one, zero. Then, you know, our input goes to zero and then we have a next clock. So now our input in the next, in the next clock here, our input is zero, right? So I'll put that next clock is a different color. So zero. And if our input is zero and we're in the state zero one, then looks like we stay in the state zero one, right? So if we're in the state zero one and our input is zero, it looks like we stay in the state zero one. chat uh hold on wait but we're not clocking we're clocking oh we're clocking here oh yeah 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 you're right <laughs> i thought i i thought i oh. accounted for that also our new state is one zero not zero one it's confusing because of the way that they've listed yes, it on. it is confusing yeah. because of the way listed okay thank you for jumping in there yes for sure um so let's look at the next clock here this is the next this is the next clock yes this is the next clock uh, while we're doing the clocking, should we also note down the outputs as we're going along? Uh, yeah, sure. We can say that. So if the, yeah, sure. We can do that as we're going along. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So here the output is one if we're in state zero, zero. So if the, the input is one, right? Input is one. We're in state zero, zero. Our output is one. So I'm going to put a one there. Okay, yeah. So state zero, zero. Input is one. Output is one. So. Then in the next state, we're in state zero one. So we're in state, uh, no, sorry, we're in state one zero. Yes, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very confusing to read this. So this, this number comes first. All right, first, second, all right. We're in state zero, we're in state one zero now. We're in state one zero. And from here in state one zero, right? Our input is one and our output is zero. So in the state one zero, right? Which is, which is gonna be state two. Right. Our input is one and our output is zero. So I'm going to put a zero here. Right. There's a space in between for this thing. Okay. Now that I know this, okay, let's go to the next clock and let's see what happens. So we were at, we were in the state zero one, right? 
our input is now zero at the clock. Our input is now zero. And um, uh, when that happens, we move to the state uh, one, one, right? That's our next state, one, one. Right? So one, one is our next state when we were in state zero, one. So if I'm in state zero, one, and my input is zero, okay, and my input is zero, um, I will be in state one, one. So we're in state, oh, sorry, no, we're in state one, zero. There we go. We're in state one, zero. Next state is one, one. So my input is, yeah, there we go. Sorry, just prior to that uh, positive edge, the input uh, changed from one to zero while mm -hmm. still in state uh, zero, one, and the output changed. So should we also note that down? Yes, we will note that down for sure. Yes, yes, we, we will note that down next. Yeah, just I was going to get the next state. But yeah, okay. yeah, that's that's true. Yes, there there is the the next part here. So if we want to look at what's happening at the output here, with the output, so let's just note what we've what we've noted so far. We've noted um, this this one here and this zero here. Okay, and then I want to note this. We are in state um, one zero one zero. Input zero. Our output is one, so there should be a one there. Okay. Immediately, I can already tell you that this is not going to be a more machine because these columns cannot be the same. So it is definitely a melee machine. I have done this. Okay, so let's continue filling this in. You know, it's gonna take gonna take a minute here. Um, input zero, state one one, output zero. We got that. Um, uh, and then from here, uh, yes, from here we can just start. You know, move to the next clock. So I don't know what I should erase here to to do everything good. I don't I don't want it to be too messy, but I also don't want to lose any information. So there's our next clock. Let's move to the next clock here. There is our next one. Uh, Adam, is now a good time for a question? Sure. Is the output um, determined on clock, or is the output determined uh, regardless? So for a melee machine, it's it's depending on, right? So for, for a melee machine, the primary output Z, right? If this is your, if these are your signals, right? W, the primary output Z depends for melee, right? We're talking about melee. Depends on the primary input and the uh, present state, right? Or then that, that's the that's the next state. Sorry, the next state. Right? So capital Y. This changes with the clock. But this doesn't change with the clock. This changes with just the switch or whatever. Right? It's just a signal. Right? So if it's depending on both, then this can also change outside of the clock. Right? Wait, isn't melee dependent on the input and the present state? Yeah, it's depending on it's the... depending on both. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So melee de is depending on both of these at the same time. The the input and the present state, right? This is the present state. So yeah, so to, to answer your question, like if you have a melee machine and you change the input, that could change the output to the circuit. But if you have a more machine and you change the input, that will not, w without clocking, that will not change the output to the circuit. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Good. Okay, so now um, we are in state one, one. Okay, our input is one. I got a good color to use. We're in state one, one, our input is one, and our output is one. Let's note that down. We're in state one, one, our input is one, and our output is one. So there should be a one here. Okay, the output. We're gonna note the output. Okay, then, right, we clock, and let's see what happens. Okay, so our input stays as a one, and we stay in one, one for our state. Right, one, one is our state. So if you are in state one, one, if you are in state one one. Um, yeah. Um, yes. So if you are in state one one, and your input is one, right? You clock the circuit. You stay in one one. So the next state is one one for one one. That's where we put that thing. So again, I'm going to repeat that. If you are in state one one, your input is one. Clock the circuit. You stay in. And so that makes sense that the output should also stay one. Now I'm gonna you know try to even this out a little bit. But there we go. Okay, there's that. So let's uh, the output didn't change either because the input didn't change. So let's move on. Well, let's see what's happening here, right? So zero one. Let me put zero one. For S1. The present state. You for the present the state. Absence. Oh, yes. One zero one zero. Thank you. So many ones and zeros. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. So then from here, right, we 
you know, we don't clock in this section here. In this section right here, we, we haven't clocked yet. But um, the input changes in this section. And when the input changes, the output changes. Right? So the input is 1, but then it becomes 0. Here it's 1, then it becomes 0. So if you are in state 1, 1, and your input is 0, so if you are in state 1, 1, and your input is 0, your output is also 0. So that's the thing we can fill in from there. Okay. And then at the next clock, okay, we are in state 1, 1, input is 0. We go then to state 1, 0, or it's actually 0, 1, because we read this first, 0, 1. So if you're in state 1, 1, right, and your input is 0, the next state is state 0, 1. So hopefully that makes sense. Good. Okay. Um, then we can take a look at the output that's happening here. So if you are in state 0, 1, and your input is 0, your output is 1. So 1. So 1. Okay, that's from this one right there. So really just we're just taking it step by step here right it's just it, that's all it is um nothing changes like the input doesn't change between this clock so nothing changes at all until the next clock so then from here to here we can take a look at the next one so um we are in state one uh, zero one we're in state zero one our input is zero okay and then we go to state um uh one zero right that's our next state our next state is one zero. So if we are in state zero one and our input is one, oh sorry, our input is zero, our next state is one zero. Okay, so that's the conclusion to make from that one. If you are in state zero one and your input is zero, we already know that. We already know what's going on. Right? We already know that that's gonna be a one. So we already filled that in somewhere earlier in the chapter. Okay. Good. Um so yeah one yes one one right there oh yeah there's one okay yes sorry i got confused for a second but we're good okay yeah so then next i think we're good so far next we can see what happens here the input changes the input changes and if the input changes then the output's going to change too so now we are in well not necessarily but we're going to check if it changes so we are in state zero one and our input is one so we're in state Sorry, one zero. I keep saying it backwards because it's upside down, right? So we are in state one zero, one zero. Our input is one, so our output should be zero. We already got that. Good. Just making sure. Next clock. Okay. Right. You're in. You're in falling edge clock. This is. This would be a rising edge clock, right? This is the rising edge here. Is that, I can't tell if that's a question or. The blue one you just did, I think it's a falling edge, right? Yeah, well, it's not, that's not a, that's not, I'm, I'm not saying that the circuit's clocked there. I'm saying that the input changed. I'm saying the input changed there, right? So our state didn't change because it didn't clock, right? But our output did change, right? Our output changed um, because our input changed there, right? So, so I'm going to be clear, like the green lines are the clocks. The green lines are the clocks. The blue lines are just, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that something changed there. Right? That's all I'm saying. So then the next clock we have is here. We're in state zero. We're in state one zero. Boy, okay, really gotta focus. One zero, we move to state zero one. Okay, so if we're in state one zero and our input is one, our next state is zero one. Yeah. Okay, input is one. We're in state one zero, our next one is zero one. Okay, if we are in state, well, we already know both the outputs for, for zero, one, so we don't even have to really do that. That's okay, right? We don't, there's nothing else to do. So that's fine. Um, okay, so now that I have this, right, nothing changes, no input changes at, at this line, right? There's no, there's no, there's nothing changes. There's no point to even draw a line because there's nothing happening. So we can just go to the next clock. And then from here, um, from here, we can look at um, uh, the next clock. So zero, zero, one. Uh, if our input is one, so our input's one here, right? Our next state is going to be zero, zero. Okay, so if you are in state zero, one, and your input is one, your next state is zero, zero. And if you are in state zero, zero, and your input is one, your output is also one. 
oh wait if you're in state zero zero and your input is one your output is also one yeah that makes sense there might be a good job that's can't imagine how long this exam how long this question would take on the exam yeah so hopefully they would just give a part to this question um yeah that makes sense to me if you're in state zero zero and your output is one input is one i mean your output's also one. okay so there's a slight mistake on this question mark because there's no way that's wrong that's correct okay we're almost done you know let's take a look what's happening here you're in state zero zero so this is not a clock right i'll say the blue line here right it's not a clock it's i'm just saying that the input changed so if the when the input changed you're in state zero zero oh sorry state zero zero oh, no. yeah that doesn't fill in there sorry you're in state zero zero your input is one state zero zero your input is one your output's one we already had that there that doesn't go there nothing goes there sorry we don't we didn't know that okay and then from here right we look at now we're in state zero zero and your input is zero so your output is also zero okay we got that there then when you are clocking the next clock is here right you are in state zero zero your input is zero perfect your next state is going to be zero zero as well right because that's the next state zero zero okay and it looks like we we're missing one here i don't know how we missed one but we probably just didn't have it so let's look let's find when we're in state zero one so zero one zero one let's see zero one here's zero one right and we got to find when we're in state zero one with an output of one so state zero one with an output of one zero one with an output of one our output here is zero there we go i just missed that for whatever reason just missed that there so state zero one with an with an input of one our output is zero Finally completed the table. So there was a lot happening there, right? Anybody have any questions about what's going on in that? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, so how did you know to do a uh, rising edge? I assumed that. Uh, let's see, did it say anything? Uh, given the following timing drivers with clock, signal, clock, wave, where the output signal that, use the following assignments. I, that was an assumption. I think a way that you can tell is that the state only changes, like the present state only changes with uh, the appropriate edge. So here the uh, states only change with the positive mm -hmm. edge. That's true. If I tried to do it with the negative edge, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to make such a nice, like the table wouldn't work out that well. Because you see at the negative edge, right? The negative edge of the circuits like here, the states never change. Like, like you were just saying, right? The, the states don't change at the negative edge, right? So you would just have no state changes. And then you would, your, your states would change depending on the input, which doesn't make sense, right? So. Yeah. Okay, so we just check like when the state changes. Yeah, you wanna check when the state, when does the state change? Does the state change at the rising edge or the, or the uh, falling edge? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, someone asked, isn't the clock always rising edge unless otherwise specified? I think that's actually a fair assumption to make. I don't know if that's actually like, that's not a rule, I don't think, but they like if they don't write it, I think they just meant to write it, and it's just because they didn't they just didn't get to it. So yeah, okay. So um, great. This was this was a pretty long question, but does anybody have any questions about this? You know, I'm happy to answer anything. Sounds good. So looks like we're done. Um, looks like we're done this one then. Uh, so it was just you know derive the state table. So it, you know it took. Yeah, that's a long one, but good practice. Um, so let's take a look maybe now at a search with state table. No, I think I want to look at, I want to look at this one. Okay, this one is select the correct, what machine is it? It's definitely a melee machine because uh, the output of the circuit depends on the input variable. Right, so it's definitely a melee machine. But again, if you were doing this process and these two columns ended up being the same thing, it's a more machine because the output does not depend on the input. Okay. So next question we have here is, well, it's a select the correct state, but we don't, we don't have that. So draw the state diagram for this circuit, right? Uh, this again, just some, someone sent me this. So uh, let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, I think I need, well, whatever. Let's just make some sort of assumption here of what the, what the current state is, what the present state is. Right? Um, so let's say the present state is going to be, I don't know, zero, zero, right? So that means we're in state S1, right? 
Um, let's say, uh, first of all, let's note here, is this a melee or a more, I'll say more first. So is this a more or a melee machine? Right. Well, what we do to determine that is we look, is our, uh, is the output to our circuit connected directly to the input, right? Or is it connected rather to the present state? Right. So uh, as you can see here, right, it's connected to, it's connected to the present state, right, and the present state. So since it's just connected to the present state, this is a more type machine. That's it your is next not state, by the way. Yeah. That's your next state, by the way, not both present states. Uh, P1 is yes, your next that, state. Yes, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This is this is your next state. So this is your present. Yeah, this is the present state. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the present state here. So it's connected like this, and then it's connected. Um. Oh, then it's connected to the. Next Sorry, state. isn't this a yeah. melee machine? Well, it's connected to, but is it connected because, to the output directly? Uh, it's just like the a change in the X could change the output of z even ah, if the block I see. doesn't occur you're definitely right yeah okay so if we change but yeah you're, you're definitely right so we are connected here yes i was looking at the wrong way because i labeled this i labeled this the present state so yeah uh yes it, it, because it's connected to t1 yeah just because i i by accident labeled this one uh, as the the uh the present state then that doesn't make sense yes so it is connected to the next state but it is also connected to the present state it's connected to the variable here so it is a melee machine you're right um, it would be more if it was only connected here. Yes, it would be more. Right. But again, yeah. So like, like someone was just saying there, if we, for example, like if this was one and this was zero, right. Then the, the output here, right. This is, a, this is an XOR, right. So the output here would be one. Right? And so the output here would be one. Let's just say this was zero. So the output here would be one. Right? So, um, if I then switch so th this, this variable here, the blue ones, they change when like the circuit is clocked, right? These two ones here, they, they change when the circuit's clocked. But if I were to just change this one to a zero, right? Then this would be, this would be a zero, right? This would be a zero and this would be a zero. So you see, without clocking the circuit, I changed the output. So that must be a melee machine. Yes, I, I made a mistake there, right? So any confusion about that? Right, so it's important to just understand how it connects to the input there. Okay, sounds good. So um, let's let's continue then. So now that you know it's a melee machine, right? So that means that the present state doesn't necessarily depend. Uh, sorry, the output doesn't necessarily depend only on the present state. Um, so to get just an idea of of what a melee uh, diagram looks like, let's take a look at a melee diagram. That's a that's a more one. So a melee diagram looks kind of like this, right? So this is saying that you know if we are in state A. And our output is, sorry, our input is zero, our output is zero. If our input is one, our output's zero, right? And we clock it, we move to here, right? So there's always, from every state, there's the two options coming out of it. There's the if w equals one or if w is equal to zero. So from here, we certainly have to have, you know, if w equals one, then, then z equals something, right? And then we also have to have another thing coming out, which is if w equals zero, uh, you know, then, then z equals something. So again, from every state in the melee type um, diagram, you need to have the two, two uh, arrows coming out, two transition lines coming out. So if W equals one, so if we're in state S1, I guess, sorry, let's, state, let's start with state, yeah, S1, that's, that's what was labeled here, right? So if I just make an assumption here, I say we are in um, um, our present, present state, present state is zero, zero, right? Then uh, the output here, well, that's zero there, and then this line goes here, it's zero there, okay? So if we are in state zero, right? We'll, we'll state variable zero, zero here, right? A and lot faster, a way to do it a lot faster would be just, just make the state assign table. It goes so fast because yeah, you can quickly derive the functions um, of the relations between them and then the state assign table can fill it in two minutes. Fill it in like that, okay, sounds good. Yeah. So we'll try that. Let me, I'll just do maybe one or two states like this and then and then we'll try to sure. see how it fills in. Okay. That. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, if I, if the input is one, right? So, okay, again, I'm using, I'll just use the W because that's what I'm used to using. So I'll just use W. So if W is equal to one, then we have a one here, we have a one here, we have a one here. So if W is equal to one, the output's one. If W is equal to zero, we have a zero here, we have a zero here, right? Um, so the output's zero, okay? So we have that there. Oh, I didn't even need to write it yet, but there we go. There's that one, right? And 
when it's clocked, let's see what happens, right? So if w is equal to one, right, then we have all these, well, what's really important is we have a one here, right? And then here, well, the inputs here are gonna be zero and zero, right? The zero is coming in like that, this zero is coming in like that, so the output here is gonna be zero, right? And then when I clock the circuit, this is going to be one and zero, right? But it's, it's so yeah, one, zero. So we're gonna go to S2. So when w is equal to one, we're going to S2. One, going to one, zero. Yes. Yes, we're going to S2 now. Right, that'll be our next. Wait, could you just quickly explain why when you clock it becomes one? Yeah, well, essentially, oh, it's a T flip-flop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I, I really gotta, I really gotta focus more. Okay, so it's a T flip-flop. That is an important thing. I shouldn't have assumed it was a D flip-flop. So let's go just make sure we, we know what a, you know, the operation of a T flip-flop. So essentially it's just gonna toggle the output there. Right? That's why it's called a, a T flip-flop. And so here we have our truth table for a T flip-flop. So the output here is the input to the T flip-flop is a one, right? Input to the T flip-flop is a zero here. Right? So when I clock the circuit, we have a one here, right? One, it's going to just complement what was here already. So it was zero, zero to begin with. So now it's going to become, we assume it's synchronous. Yeah, we do assume it's synchronous because I don't think we deal with any kind of asynchronous circuits here, right? Um, so if the input is one, that means on the clock, we're going to toggle the output. So now the output is going to become a one here because we were in state zero, zero. So now it's going to be one, zero. And so this is still, this is still going to be one, zero. Right? So one, zero is going to be S2. Okay, so so same same reasoning, but yes, it is going to be a it is going to be a T flip flop, not a D flip flop. Okay, so it's good to know this. Okay, uh, can we delete that? And then from here again, you know, we would just say, okay, well, we move to two diff. There's two options from here, right? Either go here or we go to another state, right? You're gonna you go here, or you can you can go this way, or you can figure out what's gonna what's gonna happen like that, right? Let's let's do one more. Let's just figure out what the next state is for S one if W is equal to zero. So let me erase all this. We're assuming present state is equal to zero, zero. Um, and so if W is equal to zero, then this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, right? Maybe I'll set these to, to blue, right? So that means this is zero here, right? And this is zero here, right? Zero here. So we're just gonna stay in the same state, right? It looks like we're just gonna stay in the same state because what's gonna happen is the input to both of these are zero. So it's not gonna toggle it, right? So we, what's gonna happen, um, we're doing the state table version two, right? Uh, let me just draw this arrow here, right? Uh, yeah, that seems to, that, that's gonna be a simpler way of going about doing this, but for sure, understanding it from the circuit is an important thing too, right? So we're gonna stay in the state like that. In fact, whenever W equals zero, right? I'm quite certain, whenever W equals zero, oh, no, 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 but then you could have, you have a one here, so never mind, like, that could, that could uphold right there, yeah, okay. So, then we have this, right? So we could, we could complete the state table from that. So let's, let's, let's try to make a state assigned table that's going on here. Um, and although it would be a similar process. So let's, let me, let me make the state assigned table here. And we can, you know, much more easily fill in this table after. So I'll make some rows here, or columns. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, I should give more space for that. So we have this, we have this, and then we have this, and then we have this. Okay, so this, wow, well, really crooked. <laughs> Let me try to fix that. That's fine, there we go. So um, we're going to want to do this. Now, let's see if I can make it any kind of more uh, wicker. So present state, then this is the entire next state section. This is W equals zero. This is W, W equals one. This is your output. Oops, output. This is W equals zero. This is W equals one. Mealy machine, so we have W equals zero, W equals one. Um, and then I'll just put in my present state variable. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, uh, one, one. And so we get, that's S1, S0, S2, S2, yeah, S3, okay. Um, and then from here, 
right? We're going to want to just fill this in and it's going to be easier to, to do the table from this after. Um, so uh, if our present state is zero, zero, so what we can fill in from here already is if our present state is zero, zero, and this is going to be zero, uh, sorry, it's going to be one, zero, one, zero. So if our present state is zero, zero, and our output is one, our, uh, our input is one, our output is also one, it's going to be zero right there, right? Um, w equals one, our next state, our next state is going to be uh, one, zero, right? And here, we don't know what the, what the next state is going to be. So let's take a look. Let's try to fill it in here. So if W is equal to zero, our next state is going to be, well, it's going to be the same one. So we're going to stay, we're going to stay exactly there. Yeah, that's what we determined before. Right? And so from this, this is essentially where you get this, this whole picture right there. And then let's continue here, right? So from state, you know, um, S zero. So let's say we're in where we, we go, to, we're going to fill in this row now. Let's try to fill in this row, right? So what that means is I'll start with just first of all, W is equal to zero. Okay. And we are, our present state is, and I should just be clear here. This is uh, Y one, Y zero, right? Y one, Y zero. And this is capital Y one, capital Y zero, capital Y one, capital Y zero. And that's of course just set since then. So Y one, Y zero, there we go. So from here, right? Um, if we are in st state S zero, which means our variables are zero, one, right? And our input is zero. I want to figure out what the next state's going to be, what the output is. So let's start with the output, right? If the output is, so it's, it's a zero here. Well, let's, let's figure out what's going in here. Isn't it faster to come up with Boolean expressions for T zero, T one, Y zero, Y one, uh, T zero, T, T okay. T zero, T one. Hey, you okay. can solve the question in two minutes that way. You can just say is the output Z is Y1, small Y1 present state, X or T1. Yeah. And then uh, T1, which is your present state. I'll just call them T instead of capital Y. So okay. small Ys are your present state, Ts are your next state. So Z is Y1, X or T1. Yeah. Okay. T1 so let, me, is... let me write that. Let me write that down first. So yeah. So yeah. Y1, X or T1. So X1. Yeah. T1, yeah, that makes sense. And T1 is Y0, X or X. X or Y, yeah, X, W, yeah. So Y0, yeah, Y0, X or W. X or W, yeah. And then T2. And T0 is Y0, oh, X Y1. So, yes. Uh, T0 is going to be Y0. Yeah, so that's X one or of the inputs is going to be Y0. And then we're going to XOR with Y1. Y1. Yes. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yep, yeah, perfect. And then, so from here, essentially, we have, um, uh, uh, yeah, so from here, essentially, we have a way to determine the next state just given these variables here, right? So we don't have to actually draw it in the circuit. That makes a lot of sense. So thank you for that input there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So now, right, if I want to tell you what the, uh, you know, I, I guess I should call this, I'll call this T's just to, to stay consistent here. So that's a W and then that's a, t zero t that's t and that's t yeah that makes sense so now um uh zero one is our y one y zero zero one right so t one right well let's do t zero first because that's that only depends on these two right um so t zero will be the same between these two because it doesn't depend on um on w so we want to xor them right uh so it's going to be a one this is going to be output of one right because they're not the same so it's going to output a one so both of these are going to be a one like this and then for the next one let's just do all the t zeros i think that that makes sense do all the t zeros so this is also going to be a one because y zero and y one are not the same and this is going to be a zero zero there right because they're the same so xor these two is going to get you that okay so i'll just you know highlight here a little bit to help the understanding there we go okay so i filled in that section of the table now let's do t1 so T1 depends on Y0 and um, Y0 and uh, um, and W itself, right? So 0 XOR 0 is going to be just 0. So that's why we got that here, right? 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1. 0 XOR 0 is going to be 0. 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1. And then similarly, 0 XOR 1 is going to be 1. 1 XOR 1 is going to be 0. 0 XOR 1 is going to be 1. 1 XOR 1 is going to be 0. 
Okay, so again, I'm just using the fact that we derived these formulas for things like that. Definitely a lot faster, yes. Um, Wait, I have a question. Yes. So essentially our next state is the uh, value right before we enter the flip-flop, yeah. not, not the Y1. This is our present state, right? That's what the current output of this, well, not output of the circuit, but that's what the current state variables are. Current right? state, okay. So T1 is right before we enter the flip-flop. That's the next state. Uh, that's the next state, yeah. That's the next state there, yeah. Right. That's what's going to go in. One, once we clock, that's what's going to be stored in memory. Um, could you just go over how you derived, got T1 for W equals 1? Because when I did it, I got the same as T1, so I'm, I must have made a mistake. Yeah, T1 for W equals 1 here? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just go Y0, X or, Y0, X or W, right? That's, that's the formula we have for it. Mm -hmm. Y0, X or W. So 0, X or 1 is 1, right? Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. That's right. 1, X or 1 is 0. 0, X or okay. 1 is 1. And then one X or one is a zero here. Oh, okay. All right. Right? Yeah. That's what we did. So why is the next state T not Y? Well, so the, essentially you want to think about what's going to go in, what's going to be stored to memory next time we clock, right? Uh, right. Next time we clock, what's going to be stored into memory? Well, it's the thing that's here, the variable that's here, right? Or not directly stored in memory because it's not a D flip-flop, but what's going to affect the stored memory, right? It's this right here. And the stored memory is essentially our, our, um, state, current state. Does this account for D flip flops though? This kind of looks like a D flip flop. I'm not um, sure because there. Oh, it's only T should only be if T is one, then the output should flip. Like the, the uh, so I'm not sure because if you look at like okay, present state zero one right, we're saying the next state is one one, but what we're actually saying is that. T1 and T0 are both going to be 1, which means if T1 is 1 and T0 was 1, the output of the D flip flops flips. So you, I see. the next state would actually be 1, 0, correct? Okay, let's see. Yeah. So if if we had, uh, you were saying if our present state was, sorry, it was. The T for a T flip flop, it's just. It's going to flip it. Um, yeah. If T is, is, is 1, the output is opposite of whatever it is presently. Yeah. The next state is the opposite of the input state. So would you have to, like we have equations for T1 and T0, but um, was that the same as like Y0 plus or Y1 plus? Like, is that the same as saying that it's this, like it's the next state? Are those yeah. values just good? I see, I see what you mean, right? So yeah, if we, if we were to try it out here, right? And we said this was zero, zero, right? Zero, zero. Um, and then, yeah, so it was zero, zero, and you were saying if our W is equal to one, and yeah, if our W was equal to one, this would be a one here, right? So zero, zero, W is equal to one, our next state should be, well, yeah, it should be one, zero, because this input here is going to be zero. So that's like, this actually seems to, uh, it works for this one at least. What about the second um, row on the second row assigned okay. table, like where we have, um, Present state is zero one, and then if x if the input zero as well. Zero one input is zero as well. Okay, zero as well here. Let's try it out. So zero one. Uh, right? the, oh no, it, it is zero one. Sorry, never mind. Zero, yeah, that's right. So then uh, this input here is going to be a one, so it's a one here, right? And then this input here is also a one, so it's going to be a one here, regardless. Oh, actually, I, I guess I have to check if this is zero. Yes, I have to check if this is this is zero. Oh no, I don't have to check if it's. If it was a one, I have to check if it's a one, but there it is. So that's a one there. So now if our input is zero, we're in state one, zero, one. Yeah, we're in state zero, one. Our input is zero. Our next state should be one, zero. That, that seems right to me. Yes. Okay. So what I'm thinking is that effectively what we did here is we did it with D flip-flops and then we need to use that conversion idea, right? Convert this to the D flip, uh, the T flip-flop um, idea like that. Right, there's a conversion table that we do to just to just to do that at the end here, which is like that. Does that sound right for from for people who are uh, knowledgeable with it? I hope it sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so we're gonna have to use this table to convert it. Um, so yeah, okay, so 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 it's it's T, but this is using D flip flops. Using D. So what's next 
is the Z value. So the Z value is Y1 X or T1, right? So what we want to do is we just want to- Sorry, yes. why are you writing down it's using D flip flops? Because this table right here is, is, is what we've created is the table if it was D flip flops here. Wait, oh. Didn't we create the table if it's T flip flops and then we need to convert it into D flip flops afterwards? I think the yeah. other way. I mean, but the diagram is showing four T flip flops, though, right? That's true. That's true. And so what we want is the state table, which represents for T flip flops, right? But just using, see, we're creating this table with only these functions here. Right? Yeah, only which are in terms of the T flip flops. Which, well, this is T to convert to D. Someone said that in the chat too. This is a T flip flop to convert to D flip flop. Yeah, because when we're drawing state diagrams, it's always with a state assign table or state table, which is using D flip flops. Yeah. When we're creating state diagrams, we want to use, sorry, we want to use D flip flops is what you're saying. When we're creating these ones. Yes. 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 So then what we've done here, that makes sense. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. What I'm confused about is just that we have D flip flops here. The circuit has T flip flops. Obviously, I see that, right? But this does not represent what's happening with uh, T flip flop. Like these, these next circ, the, the the next states are not what's happening if it's a T flip flop. Do you see? You can you can just extend this table though and add instead of where you have inputs. Like this next state part is actually just the um, flip the flip flop inputs. You can just move the next state over where the output is, and then move the output over again, and then use the um, use the the t values that we have now along with the present state, because that's that's what this our, our t flip flop works, right? Yeah. If the present state and um, the uh, t if the present state's on and the uh, t values on, then the, the next state will be inverse of the present state. Yeah. So you just take the present states and then see whether the respective T values is zero or one. If it's one, you'll just flip that um, that bit. If it's not, you'll just keep it the same. So for example, if you wanna convert that table to the D table, um, the first row is gonna stay the same, I believe. Or no, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be the same number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the second one is gonna be present state is zero one, but then the next state at W zero, it's going to be uh, one zero instead of one one. Because be one zero flipping. because the first bit is flipping and the other one's not, and then the other one would be zero no, no, zero because both are flipping because both are flipping. Look, because at at uh, at at s zero, right? Your next state, your t is one for both of them, so you're flipping them. You're flipping both. Your t is one. My for t both zero. Of them. My t zero is one for both of them. Your t one and t zero are both are, are both one. Oh, in the you're, actual you're next state. In the w actual. Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. only looking We're at only W0. Looking at w zero. We don't care about W1. For okay, okay. Only at okay. W0, yeah. yeah. Both are, yeah. both are, t, both T's are one, so it flips it. So then um, on, on the D flip flop, it should be zero, one, and then at W is equal to zero, that should be your next state is, uh, you flip both both bits, so it's one, zero. Does that make sense? Be one, zero, because, yes, for, so, so here I would write, so what, what essentially what I'm saying is that this is like my, T flip flop. This is the actual next state, right? What yeah, I'm gonna put. Guess, what I'm gonna yeah, put we here. Could do that. We could do right? that. W equals zero. W equals. Zero. That's what. That's what I'm essentially trying to do here. This is like my T flip flop. Okay. Function, right. Yeah. So then, what you're saying here is I put one zero. Um. Yes. Put yes. And the next one would be zero zero, for zero, W one. Yeah. yeah. And let me just make sure I, under, I understand exactly why what's happening. So, um, the present state is y one w what is zero one what that means is that the um uh if the input is one into a t flip-flop when you clock it the, it's going to flip the bit the bit is going to flip right so here that means this one represents that we're flipping the second bit in both of these to get to the next state and yes. this zero represents that we're not flipping that bit to get to the next state yeah okay that makes sense to me just Hopefully look that at makes the, sense. The, look at the truth table on the left. So uh, you have, we have a present state, then you have the next state of that present state. So, and then mm -hmm. depending on your T, you will either mm -hmm. flip that bit or keep it the same. That's why yeah. the yeah. the top row doesn't change because for the for W0, because both T's are zero, so it will just keep it the same. Yeah. 
that makes sense. Okay, so then for this one, neither of them are flipping. Yeah, so it's just going to be 0, 0, and 1, 0 here, right? Because nothing's flipping when we, we have a minus here. And then here, we want to flip the first bit. So it's going to be 1 and 0 like that, and 1 and 1 like that. Okay. No, wait, and, what? No, 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 because at W0, uh, your T is 0, so it, should be, it, it will stay 1, and then, okay, yeah, 1, 1, there we go. That makes sense. That's fine. Yeah. That's good. Okay, yeah. 1, 1, and then... And then 0, 1, 1, 1 for this one. And that's, again, because what we're representing is that here, it, since both of these present states are 1, that means the t-flip-flop will flip both of the bits. Right? The t-flip-flop will flip both of the bits here. Yeah, right? This, so this does make sense to me. I don't know if it's right, but this makes sense. Wait, sorry, why are you saying that if the present states are 1, then the t-flip-flop will flip? Oh. Isn't the present state like the output of the operation that you're just, doing? No, no, just look at look at the present state as q. Oh, oh, that, oh, that depends on how you look at it. So... Present state is it QT? Well, present state is your QT, and your next state is QT plus one. So yeah. that's that's my that's my logical reasoning. So you will take your QT, which are your present states, and then you'll find the QT plus one, depending on that, and then your T value. So that's how you fill the table. So if I'm understanding correctly, we have in the middle there those the the two uh, columns in the middle are the D flip flop, and then from there we're converting to T flip flop. No, 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 no. The two columns there. in the middle are your state assigned table for the T flip flop, and then on the columns on the right, the two columns on the right are your dip are your D flip flop state assigned table. Because look, you have T there. You don't have capital Y. You have T. That's why that's why it uses T zero and T one. To in the in the question as well to show you that you're using the T flip flop state diagram. If it was using D, it would probably say capital Y zero and capital Y one. Okay. So right. so what can, can we go over what the the two columns on the right are and how we got them? That's yeah, the, I'd like that as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what we just did though. So okay, the, col the, the the two columns on the right essentially are you take these two middle columns here, right? You take these two middle columns here, um, and we, we look per row, okay? So the present state, if the present state has a one in either position, right? So let's look at this one here, right? We have a zero in the first spot and a one in the second spot. Sorry, so that means our first bit is not gonna change when we move from this set to this set, right? Our first bit is not gonna change, right? Our first bit is gonna stay one, zero, one, zero. And our second bit is gonna flip because we're gonna have a, the, the T flip flop is gonna toggle. So it's gonna be zero, zero for that. And we did that. Oh, so the the, rest of them. the two rightmost columns are the, those are the conversions from T to D. Yeah, let's look at the conversion okay. table. Someone suggested here that we look at the conversion table. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. I, I did it on my own time while you guys were doing that. And, uh, I found that the right two tables that you guys, the right two columns that you guys produced were the same outputs once you use the table to convert. To convert there, yeah. Okay, right. So that's good. That's 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 good to hear, right? So, um, yeah. Okay, there we go. So if we're going from zero to zero, we have a zero there. Yeah. So if you're using the table, right? That means if your present state is zero, ugh, oh boy, come on. There we go. If your present state is zero and your next state is zero, then your next your t flip flop would be zero. Right? You have a zero right there. And then similarly, if you're going from one to no, one, no, you should you should do it the other way. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm the messing second, up something there. Yeah, your second zero is in your next state. It's your t value. So you should go like present so from, state t. Then you find the next state. Present state t, as in oh, as in here, as in like here. On, yes, that's t. That's not the second state. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. From here to the uh uh to the way to where. To okay, so can you, okay, look, uh, your first column in your, your table yeah. is the first column on the, on the pasted table, right? Yeah. Your yeah. second column or your second and third column on your table are the fourth columns in the, in the conversion okay. table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that goes there. So that, that is that. Yep. And that is, that is that. Okay. And yeah. then this, that means that this must be here right so that must be your next state thing right there yep so that means that if our so then to fill but if we want to fill in this table oh then we can just say okay i'm going from zero so green zero to zero 
right? Zero to zero. So my next state should be zero here. That's the logic that we're going, going with like that. Yeah. Like, like this. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't that be under W equals zero? Because you. It's, it's the same thing. You have zero for both. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, okay. Yeah. But it's only in this case, it's, yeah, it's only in this case, it, Okay. It, it right, should right, be right. W equals zero. But yeah. It's yeah. It's the same for both. So, okay. Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. Well, so we essentially, there's nothing else to do, essentially. We, we have our table filled in. So I can just, I can just start building the, the state that guy, then, I think, from here. Uh, yeah. And so this is our present state, and this is our next state. And this is the table I use for building this right here. Hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully that, that, is, that is correct. OK. So um, yeah, OK. So I'll just draw all the circles for our present for our, our states, I mean. right? So all the circles for our states, we have S1, S2, S3, and S0, right? so S0. So if you are in uh, the S1, we've already dealt with, right? So that means if you, let's just confirm that what we have on the table here matches that. So if we are in S1, right, S1, um, and W is equal to zero, then you will stay in S1, correct? If you are in S1 and W is equal to one, you will go to state S2. That is correct, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, I guess I didn't have the, I don't have the, the Z part here, but we can do Z from, we can do Z from here. Um, so now if you're in state S2, well, actually I should have, should have just done that. Um, if you're in state S2, which means your present state is one zero, right? And uh, W is equal to zero, your next state is going to be one, 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 one is S3, okay? Okay, so we have this, right? Yeah, because we want to make the state that guy, yeah. Um, so if we are in state S2 and W is equal to one. Did I say one? Sorry. No, if W is equal to zero, right? Then we have that. And then our output, I'll deal with the outputs in a second. Let me just get the whole chart going here, okay? If W is equal to one, right? W is equal to one. So you're in state S2, W is equal to one. Your next state is zero, one. Zero, one is S0. So that would be here. W is equal to one. Z is equal to zero. I will answer your question in a second. Well, let's see what, what would happen if we find the binary equation. Okay, so what if the two flip flops weren't the same? Um, yeah, what if the two flip flops weren't the same? I don't, I don't know if we, think you're ever going to be given we a gonna question gonna where the two flip flops aren't the same. I mean, you, right. it's still the same procedure. You only convert one of the flip flops then instead of both to get the next state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That would yeah. be such a douche the move. The professor already did an example of that. So, I mean, I don't think it's out of the question. Oh, did he? Yeah. Like Reza did that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember I don't I remember doing that, but okay, we'll take we'll I take a look. It was the last. Uh, we'll take a look at his lecture. lecture. Well, let's let's try to go through that one too. That'll be that'll be a good one to go through as well. Okay, and then from here, we have uh, Z, well, Z we don't know. Okay, so then um, let's look at our S3 now, right? So if you're in S3 and W is equal to zero, you're gonna go to S0. So W is equal to zero, you're gonna go there, right? And if you're in S3 and W is equal to one, you're gonna go to one, one, which is S3, right? So if you're in state one, one, W is equal to one, you're gonna go to one. So W is equal to one. Z we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so we're almost there. We just got to figure out what's happening from S0. So if you're in S0, W is equal to 0, you go to 1, 0, which is S2. Okay, so that's for W is equal to 0. And then we have our Z is equal to something. Okay. Question? No? Someone's just unmuted. Parva is unmuted. There we go. Um, so then if you're in S0 and you move to, and, and your input is 1, so then you're going to have 0, 0 as your next state, which is S1. Right, so S1 is over here. So of course my diagram is going to get all screwed up now. So I'll say W equals zero, Z equals one. There we go. W equals one, Z equals that. Okay. So let me just remind us. If I'm ready for timing diagrams, yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll we'll do more examples like that. Yeah. Um, let's make sure like I, I write down the present state. So yeah, zero zero one zero S three is one one and S zero is zero one. So now I just want to find the output. So the output is y1 xor t, right? So xor t1, sorry, y1 xor t1. 
Um, so I, I can just do that from this table here, right? So if our, let's say our present state, if our present state is zero, zero, right? And, you know, that, well, okay, we already know that actually. S1, we already know the two outputs there. So let's do one that we don't know, right? So for if our present state is S0, right, which is right here, S0, we have two arrows coming from it, right? Um, so um, if W equals zero, let's start with, w equals zero we got to look at our t value so it's y1 zero and i said w equals zero start so y1 t1 zero xor one is going to be one so zero uh that's going to be one oh, i already wrote that somehow i don't know why i wrote that um which time do boolean logical functions which time do boolean functions okay looks like you guys got that under control um then if w is equal to one right then it's still y zero x or the first one zero x or t1 so that's zero this time so our output is going to be zero okay good we got that um let's do s2 next so it's going to be here right so s2 i'm going to take y1 x or t1 so one x or zero is one for w equals zero that is for s2 t equals zero we get one s2 w equals zero we get one there we go and then similarly, uh, one XOR one is zero. So zero is our output there. Okay, we're almost done. Then we have uh, S3, right? S3 is this is this one here. Um, and so if we have W is equal to, uh, yeah, for state one, one, W is equal to zero, let's start with, right? You're gonna do, again, remember just our formula is just Y1 XOR T1. So Y1 XOR T1 is gonna be zero, right? So that's going to be zero. And here it's going to be one X or zero, which is going to be one. And there we go. There's our state assigned table, or is the, there's our um, uh, state diagram. Okay, that took a lot. That took a lot of steps. Let me try to recap to the best of my ability here. Um, so what we did essentially, can you read the state diagram there as part? Yes, the arrows I did the yes. Yes. For the arrows I did the yeah. That's good. Um just in case you want to do the example Reza did, I sent you the okay, screenshots perfect. on Discord. Great, thank you. Yeah, that would be a good one to do for sure. And that's that's some of his work there too, you sent me? Uh yeah. Okay. Uh that's all he did. He left the rest up so as okay. an exercise for students. Okay, sounds good. Yes, we will definitely take a look at that. We also didn't upload the version with the solution, so anyone who didn't attend the class, they were pretty much screwed. Yeah, I see. Okay, so yeah, that's good that we got it sent here. Yeah. Um. So okay. Let me close this. Close here. So let me try to recap, but if anyone can, you know, support me here. Uh, so let's see. Um, we have we started with the circuit. Right, we know what the states the state are, states are assigned to us, right? So, I wanted to make a diagram. So I think we, we decided that you know I could I could sit here and start just plugging in numbers into the circuit, but we could also make try to make a state assigned table for the circuit, right? Um, and so, we're just drawing state diagrams on the end. So from here, we okay. So first of all, the present state is just the, all the combinations of the present state, just labels. That's what that column is. Okay. So then this column here, this we created using functions of z t1 and t0 right the func like we define functions for z t1 and t0 here which are these which look like that right but we had to convert this into using like these t flip-flop things right here like that right we had to convert that into we had to get our next states by using t flip-flops we are using t flip-flops right now right so Typically, I think what I've seen done is that, you know, you, you connect these two to find what the T flip-flop equivalent would be. But no, we, we want to know what the next state would be in a D flip-flop, right? Because to make this diagram, we need to know the next states as a D flip-flop. So what we did is, is essentially we know this present states, of course, and we know the T flip-flop present states, uh, T flip-flop next states. Right? Um, so this would that, that, you know, obviously correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the T flip-flop flop flop flip flop um uh, next states next states next states which is fine but what we want is we want the d flip flop next states and so to get that we essentially said okay i can connect oh, 
color. Right? I can connect from here to here. So if my present state is going from zero and my T flip flop is zero, right? Then my next state is going to be a zero, right? Like that. Let's make this maybe. And so I did that for all of these to find all these different points right here, right? Um, so I, I, I did it slightly different, but that's, that's I think, a better way of doing it, just, just connecting it to the table, right? And then uh, from there, I can fill in the rest of the stuff from the diagram here. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a breath. That was a, that was a real mess of a question. So I hope everybody, you know, got something from that. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff going on, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We can try to go through them for sure. And thank you for everybody for all your support through it. Right. That's, that's great. That's why. Oh, could you show it. the circuit? I'd like to take a photo of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. No problem. Also, this will be posted after, right? The PDF of this will be posted. After, so. Oh, okay. Okay. But, uh, but of course you can take the picture later. Um, okay. So I think now let's try to do a, um, maybe a VHDL question. Cause I want to get one of those through because he said there would be some VHDL. So let's at least do one VHDL question. So I think that would be. Adam, can we also do a chapter seven question after the VHDL? Sure. Because so far everything that he solved in class and it's all just chapter eight. And I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good with chapter eight myself, but chapter seven is just the, I, I, I have, I honestly struggle more with chapter seven than eight. I yeah, know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, especially some of the homeworks. The, they are, uh, yeah, okay. and I don't know like what type of questions could be on the test because most of the stuff that they that's on the book um, suggested problems are design questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, uh, I don't know exactly. Yeah, what, yeah I know what, what you mean. I know what you mean for sure. Yeah, um, I think okay. Let's we we will try one of those. I don't know. I think I have some I have some suggestions for that too. Uh, let's actually let's actually do this one. I like this one. So any questions before we go? No, sounds good. Okay. So um, let's start here. The question says, describe the behavior of the given FSM. Oh, someone's unmuted. Okay. Um, so the, describe the behavior of the given FSM um, uh, using a state diagram. So obviously we wanna make a state diagram. So let's take a look at what's happening here, right? Let's hopefully we can understand all the code here. So we have a clock coming in a reset coming in and a, and a W that's, that's a W, right? So a clock, a reset, and Z is our output here. Right, great. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, this is just the beginning code, right? Signal Y is just going to be your state type. Okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll deal with that in a second. Um, so then if reset equals zero, then Y goes to a, so it looks like, uh, oh yeah, we have three options for states, a, B and C. That's what's essentially happening here. We have a, B and C as our state types. And particularly, you know, reset is this one, right? Because if reset equals zero, then uh, y the state, the current state goes to zero, and so that's um, uh, that means that our reset is going to be a low active reset, right? But that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's just it's just a low active reset. Okay. A question? Say it. Oh, say it. Here again. Are you gonna say something? No. Oh okay. no, 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 no. You're good. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Um, from here, if the clock event, like as in we're clocking and the clock is one, so the clock event, right? So case Y is, if our state is A, right? If our state is A and the input is zero, then stay in A is what this is saying, right? So if we're clocking, right? And the input is zero, then stay in A. If the clock isn't zero, as in the clock is one, go to B, okay? That's what that's saying. We haven't dealt with the outputs yet, right? So I can't tell anything about the outputs Z yet, but let's just understand how state is going from state to state here. Then when we're in B, if Y equals, if W equals zero, right? Then go to A, okay? Then go to A here. So W equals zero, that means go back to A. Okay, otherwise, right, go to C, W equals one. Then if we're in C and W equals zero, go to A, okay? W equals zero, go to A. Otherwise, stay in C, okay, right? So this is uh, W equals uh, one. Okay, so we haven't talked about output yet, right? So let's take a look at the output here. So Z is one when Y equals C else zero. Okay, so I, I mean, I've never seen the VHDL code written like this, but hopefully, you know, it's, it's understandable still, right? So Z is one when Y equals C else zero. Y is our state variable, where is it? Y is our state type. So, um, uh, 
if we look here, you see it just depends on what state we're in, right? It just depends on the present state, right? It doesn't also depend on W in any way. So this is going to be a more type machine. And so, you know, here is Z equals one and the rest of them Z equals zero. So we have that. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Describe the behavior using a finite state. You know, so we, we described it here like this. Can I repeat what I just said about the output or about just the whole thing? Either one. I can do. How about why it's more? Yeah. So a more machine, remember a more machine has your well, your primary output, which is Z. In a more machine, it just depends on the state you're in, right? You can just say, okay, that the circuit's in the state, so that's why it has this output. And so if you look at it, right, the Z is one when Y equals C. The state is the C state. Otherwise it's zero. So it only depends on the uh, present state. The fact that the present state is, is C, right? that's it. No problem, yeah. Okay, so that's that. It's really just understanding code, but it's not super complicated code. So, uh, you know, hopefully people can understand. Obviously, I, I don't know what every single line exactly does here, right? Like, um, but like, I, I get, it's actually explained it pretty well. Like, I don't know what the libraries do. I have no idea what the libraries are helping us with. I understand you have to put them at the front. Um, but if someone asks me, like, what does the, what what functionalities do the libraries give me? I don't know. So they've not Dude, really... I exactly think the libraries are the code. same in any code, right? It's adding... It seems like it. ...functions or, like, statements and stuff. I don't see... I, I don't know... Yeah. So, like, I don't know what... I know if you don't out. add it, it'll say that certain words don't exist, even though you know that they do. Like, the word architecture or something like that, like, it'll be like, oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, really? I see. So, it's just like you just I know from it. experience. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. So, yeah. There's that question. Any questions about this one? No. Okay. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Um... Let's look at I think we should also mention whether or not, like just to answer the question or fully answer the question, whether or not it's rising edge or falling edge. Yeah, if it's rising edge. So it looks like it's going to be a rising edge, unless I'm mistaken. It, it because looks like yeah, it's it level trigger, not even a rising edge. No, I think because... it's rising edge. Well, it says clock because... event. So I think. Yes, when the clock changes and the clock is one, so that's rising edge, right? I'm quite sure. Event means when the attached variable changes. I, I remember there being a specific rising edge command in one of the VHDL stores. I do also remember that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, also rising edge that. is the same thing as this entire big statement. Okay. 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 Seem pretty confident about that. So then we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. There's two ways to represent a rising edge. Then there you go. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So like, like, like he was just saying, yeah, it's, it's saying, you know, check if there's a clock event, as in the clock is changing and the clock is one. Which means if it changed and it's one, that means that's a rising edge. So if it's a rising edge, the thing else if rising edge, then then this. All right. So yeah, there you go. That's a good point though. Can understand that. Okay. Great. So let's take a look at another one here. Um, <laughs> what would it be if it was falling edge? Yeah, you'd say you'd set it to zero here. Right, just put clock equals one. No problem. What if it's level trigger? Then you wouldn't have clock event. Right? So it would be clock is one. Right. How do I know it's more from the code? That deciding if it's more or melee is entirely about the output Z. So if I look at the output Z, let me just, you know, the output Z here is just saying Z is one when Y, when the state is C. Otherwise it's zero. So you see that the output entirely depends on just the state. And so that is a more type machine. So falling edge is the same. Well, falling edge would be a zero here. You'd say clock zero here. You are at the falling edge. That sounds bad. Uh, in the state diagram. <coughs> oh, yeah. State diagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the same. That would be the same. The, the, the state diagram would be the same. Yeah. There would be no difference. Okay. Great. So let's try some other ones. I'd like to do... Let me see. Oh, uh, by the way, I just sent the textbook page explaining the uh, clock event stuff. If you just want okay. to briefly show that so people sure. can screenshot that's, it. That's great. Thank you for sending that. Yeah. 
So here, this Just is... for reference, it's on page 423. Yeah. There you go, 423. So it's saying, you know, this is this is code for a D flip flop. So it's saying here, in this case, the event attribute refers to any change in the clock signal. Combining the clock event condition with the condition clock equals ones means that the value of the clock signal has just changed and the value is now one. All right. So this is saying if the value of the clock signal just changed and it's now one, then clock the circuit. I do whatever it says. Okay. And so that's, um, yeah, exactly. So exactly right what you said. Uh, we can't tell if we're dealing with a latch or a flip flop. I, well, we can tell we're dealing with a flip flop because it's it's left it's edge triggered, right? It's it's edge triggered. I don't think we have a level level sensitive FSM. I don't think I've we don't do that. I don't think. I mean, you probably could try it, but but no, like okay. So yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. So like any FSM that we construct will be only using flip-flops. Any FSM given to us, I guess, could be with latches. But again, that's not a very effective FSM. And I don't see why we would do that. All right. Okay. So um, that's good. Let's try to see. I don't know. I, I have some more questions, but they're mostly chapter eight questions, right? Uh, Reza would say you get fired if it's in three months. Yes, for sure. Um, so they're mostly going to be... Um, chapter eight questions. And yeah, I like to do a chapter seven question. I think that chapter seven stuff really combines a lot here, right? Um, like combines a lot of stuff here. So like it, it's, you know, comes together in chapter eight. So does anybody have any suggestions for, say, Ed, you said you wanted to do a chapter seven question. Do you have any particular suggestions for? That's, that's a thing and no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As I looked through the chapter seven questions and like some of them were weird and I don't know, but like, yeah, like, the, th the thing know, about chapter yeah. seven is that it feels like a tool set for chapter eight. It's the same sure, way that sure. chapter four was like a tool for chapter six, six. Yeah. Yeah. Like you yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't expect to see a chapter four question on its own. And we didn't, we had only had like one K map question. Yeah. K maps yeah. were like more like a tool to use for chapter six and chapter seven feels like the same thing. I don't know. It just feels weird to ask about flip flops and, counters and stuff without at the actual states but yeah that's why yeah. i'm confused about chapter seven i understand for sure i understand for sure yeah so i don't know i don't have any particular questions um and i looked through so yeah i don't i don't have any other if anyone wants to suggest a chapter seven questions for me we can go for it um now this this question is a pretty long one so i don't know if we're going to do it but someone also asked if we can do more examples where we convert between dt and jk flip-flops it's a pretty long this is a pretty long question so i don't know if we're going to do exactly this one but um, you know, this is essentially produce a circuit that does this. I could probably find a, a shorter question for this. Um, but then we could possibly do it, you know, using some kind of flip-flop, using whatever flip-flop we wanted to do, right? Um, and so we could do it like that. Oh, someone sent me a couple questions. Okay. Um, uh, what, you guys from chapter seven, what, um, how did you send this to me on Discord? Sorry, I don't. I don't know your Discord name. What's your What's your Discord name? Ah, yes. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't recognize your <laughs> your name. Okay. So, um. Oh yeah, here's some chapter seven ones. Let's take a look. Yes, you did send this one. So you did this one. Let's see. Well, these are um three bit counter sequence. This is a write the transition conditions for a. Well, that's not too crazy. I think they're actually pretty much all chapter eight questions, which you sent me because they're all have state diagrams. So if they all have state diagrams, they're all chapter eight questions, right? Um, there's some interesting ones though, definitely interesting ones. Um, but yeah, I think they're all, they're all chapter eight questions in a way, unless I'm missing some here. Let's just do the up counter and the down counter from chapter seven. That should be pretty light and pretty doable. Up counter, like, okay. Yeah. Like, a, well, uh, let's see. Modulo what? What uh, modulo three or something? Let's see, we can do that at four. Modulo three. You can also do, I think, if we're, I mean, if it goes with counters, um, like gray code conversions. I could do what? Sorry. Does that gray code conversions? What's like the gray? gray code to bind? Gray codes like, uh, um, it's think of it like if you had to count in binary, but by only changing one bit at a time, instead oh, so of like two, instead of going like zero zero one. And then zero one zero, that's two bit changes, right? Yeah. Gray code counts. So every next 
every next number is only one um one bit change than from the last yeah, yeah. that's true yeah, yeah, yeah i understand what you mean so you're saying build a counter with that or no uh, you probably could but no no you can essentially a johnson counter only one bit change at a time i guess that is essentially a johnson counter because yeah yeah it, it is. is it is just yeah that makes sense yeah uh, someone asked in the chat, Chapter 7 asks us to build counters and stuff, but don't we need state tables to design the counter? Yeah, so the Chapter 7 doesn't ask you to design the circuits. It just says, look at the circuits and see how they work. And then in Chapter 8, we design the circuits. So yeah, how about we do a Modulo 3 counter? Let's do Modulo, modulo 3 counter. Okay. Um, and then we'll convert it to, I don't know, J, uh, T flip-flops or JK flip-flops, I guess. We'll see. Does that sound good as a plan for just practicing some more stuff like this? Okay. Yes? Sound good? Okay. Sounds like everybody's good. Um, so I'll make the state diagram just to get an idea of what's going on here, right? So modulo three counter means our counter is going to display zero, one, two, zero, one, yeah, zero, one, two, and then three, no, not three, zero, one, two, and then zero, one, two, and then zero, one. Right, so it's going to keep going like this. Da, da, da. Right, so now I got to convert that to binary. So 0, 1, but I need two bits now, right? So it's going to be 1, 0, and 0, 0. And it's going to keep going like this. So that's really the sequence that's happening here. Right, that's our sequence of states. So it's going to be three different states, essentially. The output of the state, I'll do it as a more type. So we have, uh, well, I'll, say, I'll say A, um, Z, 1, Z, 0. Sorry, this is up on me a little bit now where's the tablet there we go so there's our first state then b is going to be z1 z0 is going to be 0 1 and c is going to be z1 z0 is going to be 1 0 so there's our three states of the circuit all right uh this will be our reset reset okay from here is going to essentially go like this all right that's those are our states there that's that, that's how the circuit's going to progress like this um and so this will happen re well regardless of an input essentially we don't need an input right so i can just say i don't even have to write an input there's just no input to the circuit i guess we can say like an enable we could have like an enable but we don't necessarily need that so just it'll always clock like this this is how it's going to go right only clock yeah we only we only we only have a clock here so then I'm going to make a, a state table first, right? So if we're a state is A, sorry, I got to unplug this and plug this back in. So if our state is state A, B, C, that's our, I'll say our present state, I guess. Present state. Okay, then our next state, which doesn't depend on a variable, is going to be B, C, A, right? And our output, right, Z1, Z0, oh boy, Z1, Z0, come on. All right, the tablet's being weird. Don't die on me now, there we go, okay. Y1, oh, I guess I'll call it Y0, actually. Okay, the tablet's being being annoying of course there we go y1 good then from here our output is going to be zero zero right zero one one zero so any questions about how i went from the plan to the diagram to the state table so the output refers to the current state correct in this i made it be that yes in this okay. particular case yes the the output so it's a me it's a more type machine then Right, so there's a link between the, the first and third column as opposed to the second and third column. Uh, there's a like, link between like the, yeah. the output is, is pre-clock. The output is pre-clock, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, exactly. So now I'm going to go to a state assigned table. So I'm going to say present state. Okay, I'm going to say y1, y0. Oh, I guess I should have called that. You know, that, that isn't really helpful actually to say that so let me let me erase these ones that's not actually what that is because we don't have those variables yet um so a b c so y1 is zero zero right um 
B is going to be 0, 1, and C is going to be 1, 0. And then I also have to account for the fact 1, 1, but there's, no, there's just no state. Uh, there's just no state. Right? Okay. Well, actually, I don't need that. Z, oh, Z. Output, output, right? Z1, Z0. Well, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Don't care, don't care. Next state. Okay, just I need a I need a capital Y1, capital Y0. So the next state here is state B, which is 0, 1. The next state for B is state C, which is 1, 0. And the next state for for, for C, the next state for C is state A, which is 0, 0. Okay, and don't care, don't care. So I've created my state assigned control. Again, this is a pretty simple one because there's no input variable. Um, and it's a more type, so it's pretty simple. Right, so and we don't have any kind of state D here, right? So it's it doesn't really matter. It's going on. Okay, so from here um, we can derive the functions for Z1, Z0, uh, and then Y1, Y0. Right, that's what we need to derive. Well, uh, you know, just by inspection, the output is always the state, same as the state, right? So I can just say Z1 equals Y1 and Z0 equals Y0. I don't need to do a k-map for that. That's fine. Right? It's just always equal to that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And then for y1, well, let's try to see if we can take a look at some sort of computation here, right? So I get 0, 1, 0, right? So it looks like this state here. I mean, I can do this by k-map, but I just want to show you that you can also, like, if it's simple enough like this, you can do it just by logically, like, just by inspection here, right? So I'll show how to do it by a k-map too, but but let's, let's just look here, right? So uh, I'm trying to find a function for this with relation to these inputs, right? Um, so uh, 0, 1, 0, don't care, matches this, 0, 1, 0, don't care, right, essentially, right? So it looks like that the y1 is just equal to your y0. And now this one, right, y0 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. It doesn't particularly match any of these. Let's see what's going on here. Well. 0, 0 gives us a 1. 0, 1 gives us a 0. 1, 0 gives us a 0. So it looks like if any of them, if any of them are 1, right, then it gives you a 0 as an output, right? So that looks like a NAND to me. Yes, that looks like a NAND to me. So it's going to be y1 and y0 NAND. Could also be an x norm. Could also be an x norm, yes. Okay, there we go. So I derived it without the use of a k-map, right? We didn't, obviously you can do that for bigger ones, but for here it was. So now that I have that, again, this is with D flip-flops uh, automatically, this is the D flip-flop. So let's build a circuit with D flip-flops here. So the D flip-flop is going to look like this. Oh, sorry, the clock doesn't matter. Clock goes here. So this is going to be your Q. Oh, that's not gonna be your Q. <laughs> that's going to be your D. <laughs> that's going to be the Q and we'll just leave that empty. Um, so I'll just say CLK here. And I'm going to need two, two of them, right? Because uh, I have two state variables, C, L, K. Okay. Input. So um, my output has two variables here. So let's say this is Z1 and this is Z0. Yep. And so let's say this output here is Y1 and this output here is Y0. Right, so it's pretty simple. Z1 equals Y1. So I just connect these guys up and then I connect these guys up. Z0 equals Y0. Great. Then my next state one is equal to Y0. So I'm just going to connect this around like that. Okay, my next state one is equal to Y0. And my Y0 next state is Y1 and Y0 in a NAND gate together, right? So I'm just going to take um, this output like this, this output like this. Why don't I just connect it here? So let me just do this here, right? So here, they're gonna go into a NAND gate like that, right? NAND gate there. And this will connect like that. Okay, and there we go. There is a circuit that will, is a counter modulo three, right? So it's gonna keep going. It's gonna go zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And we did that just using the whole process here. Now, 
I'd like to do this using different types of flip-flops, right? So let's convert the state assigned table into, you know, using different kinds of flip-flops. Um, so uh, we are going to need to use the conversion table, of course. So that is here, right? Use this conversion table. So can we try with a JK flip-flop? Yeah, sure. So the output, I'm going to move to the side, right? I'm going to then, uh, let me, let me make sure I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to open up the example just to match it so that I'm not going to make a mistake. Uh, yes. Okay. So we're going to have new columns here, right? For the different flip. We don't have an input, which is, which is convenient, right? We don't have an input variable. So actually I didn't need to make that much space. <laughs> it's a little bit overkill. Um, so that's fine like that. Just move that there, right? Um, there we go. So now we're gonna have to have a J, so we're doing JK flip-flops, that's what we're doing, right? So we're gonna have to have a J1, K1, J0, K0, right? And that's because the JK flip-flop has two inputs. Then from here to figure out, <coughs> sorry, to figure out here what our you know table has to be when we fill it in, Right. What we do is we just okay. So we match this. So so present state is zero. Present state is zero. Next state is one. Zero one. For our JK flip flop zero, it's going to be one. Don't care. One don't care. One don't care goes away. Okay. And then we just continue this pattern. Right. Zero zero. Zero zero. We get zero don't care. Okay, so really this is more about matching the pattern here. Oh, can you explain how you got your Y zero again? Because wouldn't Y zero have to be one 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 D? Let's see. Y zero. Y zero one 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 D and Y zero. Where's your zero one 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 don't care? So Y is capital Y zero? Yeah. So these two, if you and these two together, you get zero. So the output should be one. If you and these two together, you get one. So your output should be zero if you NAND it. And if you and these two together, I'm sure you understand this. You get one and your output should be zero, right? Where do you get zero? Should it be a nor, not a NAND? Yeah, because one and zero one gets and zero. zero. It's oh, one, one, and zero one gets or zero. zero gets one. It gets one. So it's ah, an XNOR. Yes, that's a, that, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, why did I think otherwise? I th That made sense to me as a NAND. But yeah, zero and zero, and zero gets one. Uh, NANDed. Zero NAND zero gets one. Zero and one gets zero. NAND that gets one. Yes, so that wouldn't make sense. Yes, that's what I planned. Okay, so ORing them together. Zero or zero is zero. Invert that as one. Zero or one is one, invert that gets zero. One or zero is one, invert that gets zero. And then we don't care about the last one. Okay, so yes, yeah, so that makes sense for an or instead of a nand. It's gonna be an or there. Good point. Yes. Probably should have checked the circuit. Yes, that's true. Okay, so we get that like that. Or a nor, really, is what you meant. Okay, good. Thank you for checking that. So now let's uh, let's finish completing this table. So uh, zero to one, zero to one is one. Don't care, right? One to zero, one to zero is just uh, one. Sorry, one to zero is don't care one. Um, yeah, uh, one to zero. Uh, we already did one to zero. Yeah, one to zero is don't care one. Zero to zero is zero. Don't care. One to don't well don't care. I think we just say don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Right, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I filled in this table, and now I just want to figure out some sort of function for uh to have for. Oh, sorry, I gotta restart one note quickly. There we go. Um, I want to figure out some sort of functions here for j one, k one, j zero, k zero. Right, and have those as inputs to my JK flip flop. So um, let's start with uh, J1. 
Okay, so J1 looks like it's just Y0, right? Because it matches these two, and then we, we don't care about these, these things here. So it looks like it's just Y0. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Uh, and then this one, K1, uh, we can just say it's equal to Y1, right? Because it's just a bunch of don't cares, right? So we can just say it's equal to Y1. Because the one matches. J0 is going to be equal to, well, it's almost equal to Y1, but it's just inverted. So it's just equal to not Y1, right? Because Y1 is 0, 1. This is 1, 0. You don't care about, like, they don't care. So you don't, you don't care if these match or not. So it's going to be inverse of that. And then K0 is, once again, I can just use Y0 for that. So now when I build the circuit, right, now when I build the circuit, and I think uh, the, the output doesn't change. Yeah, there's no reason the output should change. So, oh, no, 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 but the output was, yeah, yeah, the output doesn't change. So, so uh, J, K, you get whatever your output there, right? Uh, I'll just connect that to a clock. Uh, I guess I'll call it J, J1, K1, J0, K0. So there's that. You get this flip-flop there. You get that output. And then you get your clock here. Oh, I guess I'm going to get in the way of the, the thing, but whatever. So um, then we have our outputs again. So Z, oh, let me use a different color. So we have our outputs. Z, 0. Well, I'll say Z1 first. Z1, Z0. And so, okay, well, so what, what's what's Z1? Z1 is just Y1, right? So this would be Y1. This would be Y0. So Z1 is Y1. And this still matches like that. That doesn't change. Okay, so now we got to figure out, okay, so J1 is Y0, right? So I got to just start matching that. Right, so that goes like this, this, and this. So that connects there, right? Um, then K1 is equal to Y1. So this can just connect around like that. Okay, J0 is inverse of uh, Y1. I have to remember if a K flip-flop has that second output. Does a K flip-flop have two outputs? One which is negative of the other? Or one which is inverse of the other? It does? It, it has a Q, it has a Q. I just want to see that in my notes here, but I, I believe you. I just want to see it in my notes here. Does it make a difference if it does or not, though? Uh, it's just I can use that. It doesn't really make a difference. I can just use it here to oh, okay. help a little bit, right? So yeah, all yeah, the flip-flops yeah. have a complemented output. They all well. have a complement output? Okay. okay. Right. So now I want Y1 complement, so I'm going to take Y1 complement from here, right? And I want to put that to J0. So I'm going to take Y1 complement from here and put that to J0. Okay. And then uh, K0 is Y0. So I can just put that around like that. And there we go. It's the same circuit. This isn't an input. This is just a, <laughs> this is just a line. Uh, there we go. So um, we have uh, the same thing, right? We have the, the same output, but now it's with JK flip-flops instead. Right? So that's the this last bit there that we have. Okay. There's that. Okay. Should we try the one that Reza did with two different flip-flops? Does that sound good? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, someone asked, how did I come up with the equations here? I came up with the equations here by looking, comparing the these columns with these inputs. Of course, if it's more complicated and you can't tell, do it with a, do it with a uh, k-map, right? Comparing this, but I'm essentially just creating a function for this these outputs based on these inputs. Right? And so for like for J1, right? It's 0, 1, and then D, D, right? So that's the same thing as as Y0 because it's 0, 1, and then I don't care about the other two, so I don't even have to check those, right? But it matches the first two, so I match those. So then I did that for this. Uh, don't account for the rising edge factor following the check cycle. If your FSM has one rising edge filter and one following edge filter, the state table wouldn't care. Uh, the state... I can't, yeah. So it, someone's asking here if this, if the state table doesn't care if you have two flip flops, one of them is rising edge, one of them is falling edge. Um, would the state table, like the state assigned table, change at all? It's just that you're clocking then at two different times, right? There's two different times. So 
I don't know if that would essentially count as an asynchronous circuit. I think it would count as an asynchronous circuit because, because the two flip-flops are not all being clocked at the same time. And so we don't deal with asynchronous circuits. Does that make sense as an answer? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So I know we only got a few minutes left, so let's, let's finish up with that last question. You know, we'll see how long it takes. Um, but, uh, let's just, let's just take a one second break. I got to go to the washroom. So let's take a one minute break and I will be back and, uh, we will finish that last question. So I'll pause the recording for just one second and I will, I will be back. Let's continue. Uh, is everything working? Oh, I think you can't see me yet. My camera is strange. Hopefully you can hear me. Is, is the audio going through? Yeah, I think it is going through. Okay. We're good. Okay. There we go. We're back. So, um, let's try that question that was sent. I'm recording again. Yes, I'm recording again. Let's give it a go. Let's see. Oh boy. So someone sent through here. Okay. So this is the question, right? So we have this circuit. So two different types of flip-flops. And the question is, I guess, derive, derive what? The question is giving a state assigned table. Yeah, I guess it's make a state assigned table. Uh, I'm just going to check more here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree. So let's see what's going on here. So to begin, um, the state assigned table, I, I guess like the question is make a state assigned table. Make a state assign table for it. Okay, so to begin here, we will make the state assign table. Okay, so obviously it starts with a present state. So the present state, uh, how many states do we have? Well, we have two flip-flops, so there's a total of four possible states here, right? Um, and so uh, let's just say, well, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, okay? And uh, I can just call this, well, y2, y1, right? y2, y1. Um, yeah, that's, I'm gonna get confused because one's on top of the other, but let's not change it. So there we go. Oh, wow, that's not a straight line. <laughs> so now we have this. I want to make my next state, right? Next state. Okay, we do have an input, so I need to have w equals zero and w equals one as two possibilities here. But after that, it's not too much different. <coughs> and then let's take a look at our z value. Right, so our z value, is it a Mealy or a Moore machine is, a, is an important question to ask. So let me just say z here. Well, what are the inputs? So the first input is going to be y1, right? That's the first input here is gonna be y1, which is a present state variable. And then y2 is the other one. Right, y two is the other one here, so it's also a present state variable. So it's it's a it is a more machine. Make a state confirmed. Right, so it's a more machine. So we don't have to have two columns for our output. Right? It's just going to be a, a single output, well, a single column for the outputs. Right? We can deal with that in a second. So now to figure out what the um, Different ones are here. Let me just see for a second how he did. I'm looking at I'm looking at how he did it here. Wouldn't it be Mealy since the output is from the combinational part? It's more about what it depends on, right? What it's a function of. So you see Z, if I just make a function for Z here, well, it's equal to Y1 and Y2, right? Y1 and Y2. Not depending on W. It doesn't depend on W. So I, I think a part of uh, something that's confusing a lot is that you see these cables coming in. To, so you, you would imagine that it goes like this, right? And that's how I imagine it sometimes, and that confuses me. What's really happening is that this is this signal is being taken out from here, right? But the real signal is coming in like this, right? It's coming in like this. And these are coming out, so it doesn't really connect to the W in the front or something, right? So, yeah. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry. So... Um, now we need our next state variable. So the next state variables are, uh, T2 and D1, T2 and D1. Those are the variables that are going to be coming into the, 
coming into the um the, the flip-flops whichever flip-flop we're talking about right so i can well what i can do is i can derive some sort of function for t2 and uh, and d1 right? and fill in our table like this right so t2 is going to be let's see what it is so it's an or operation right between two and operations right so this one's going to be anded and this one's going to be anded with three things right so the the two and operation one of those is going to y2 and the other one is going to not w so w comma y then this one this three three and gate one is going to uh, the first top in, uh, input is y1 the next one is just w and the next one is y2 complement y2 complement because that's that's y2 complement coming up right okay so uh let's just confirm that that's the same thing that matches with the thing here very good okay and then d1 is not super complicated it's just that it's just an and operation between so it's an and operation between w and some or operation which is going to be okay so it's gonna be y2 or y1 complement y2 or y1 complement yep ends with w okay so we've successfully created our variables here and you see that uh they both depend on w so it makes sense that we have two columns here right those two columns they both depend on w um but we get different answers so let's let's just try to fill it in let's see what's happening so zero zero and zero so it's all zero so zero and it's just gonna be zero right where's our uh, well actually no sorry it's not all gonna be zero <laughs> so zero well we'll see i can't just say that outright so zero and one is zero or uh zero and zero and one is zero so zero or zero is zero okay so we are successfully zero out there and then um uh if i do in the d here it's going to be um uh so it's going to be zero or sorry zero and one right which is just going to be zero so we get a zero out there okay any faster way of filling this in let me know i don't know this is how i'm going to do it i'm just going to use the function uh, so i just wanted to ask again was did we decide this was a melee machine or a machine it is a more machine Okay. Um, for D one, uh, for W one, it's uh, there's a faster way where it's just all zeros because since, uh, it's Y two, or Y one complement added with uh W since yeah. W is zero, then that's always the whole column. Of okay, D1 so so zero. this will all be zero. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. That that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, that's good. So that that's a good point. Um, if so, if anyone didn't understand that, it's because we have. You know, if, if w is zero, this expression will always be zero, essentially. Right? If w is zero, this whole expression will always be zero. Then you can also solve for w1 pretty quickly. So um, when w is one, so that's the whole part is one. When yeah, y2 yeah, is, is one, good. so the last two are both one. And then when y1 is zero, so um, in terms zero, two, and three I are your. Yeah. yeah. And then zero. And then uh, and then here. Yes, there we go. No, I, wait. But yeah, yeah, OK. I, 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 I confused the one of d1 with the first one. Yep. Yeah. And then for T two, uh, that's just the sum of products. So those are your only two min terms. So uh, that's just the sum of products. Uh, you have a W in for T. Yeah. So yeah. The only you have only you should have only two ones in both columns, and the rest are zero. And the rest are zero. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. So it would be then. Well, let's see. Okay, so the one yeah. zero yeah. would be zero for your W zero. One uh, zero. Well, one zero would be one, sorry, and then there would be the one. Two would be yes. Yep. A, a way that you could look at it is just um, since there's only a w not in one of the terms and then a w in the other term, for when w is equal to zero, you're only looking at the w not term. Mm, that's true. And then for that to be equal to one, y two has to be equal to one, and then when y two is not equal to one, then it's zero. So, so that then would you mean this this, the, this is my table for this then. Yeah. That would be my table, yeah. Okay, and so then just, you do a similar yeah. process for the yeah, other one. Where it's, it's just it's one, 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 zero. So it would be um, w for W1 is zero, one, the second one. Yeah, the other that makes zero. sense. So let me just explain again. So what, essentially what's happening here is just that we have, uh, you know, if if W is equal to zero, right, then this whole term goes away and we just have this term. Right? And then if W is equal to one, like, in, oh, that's not that case. W is equal to one, then this whole term goes away so we just have this to focus on and that's essentially the idea uh but yeah okay so there we go we, we created that and then so it's, someone just said it to me it would be instead of me figuring this out one one zero one you said or is that it's uh 
for which one? For this, for this. Yeah, one. so it would be it would be one 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 zero. No, it would be sorry, it would be zero one zero zero. Yeah, zero, I was reading one, it. Zero yeah. zero like that. Okay, I'll trust that. I'll trust that you took that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so another way that you could look at it is that since we're looking at that one midterm because w is equal to one, then you just look. There's only one possibility for it to be one because it's handed. Which is no, 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 wait, Adam. Uh, the one one at the left column it should be zero. So t two is zero for one one. T two is zero one. on the left column. T two is zero for one one. I believe so. Yeah, because uh, what were you what you're saying is that uh, the, the answer is here. the same as this. No wait. Okay, no, what, right. what what Adam did right is I think this should be correct. It's right. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Makes sense. Yeah, but that's good. Okay, don't don't worry. Yeah, it's fine. Um. Okay, so then uh, our output Z is just the and of Y1 and Y2. So it's just going to be 1, 0, 0, 0. And there we go. Um, okay, so now that I have that, I have this table, I want to now convert this to, um, well, I mean, th that's that, that's the state assigned table. So actually, there's nothing else to do. That's the state assigned table. But if you want to convert it all to the same, um, all to the same flip-flop or something like that, yeah, I think the question like all together is just asking for the state diagram for the initial circuit. The state diagram. So then we want to convert it all to D flip flops. That's that's the idea then, right? So um, to do that, we are going to have to take this table and convert the T flip flops to D flip flops. So let me see if I am going to be able to do this correctly. Let me I have to close one. Um, just like a shortcut for converting from T to D, or the way I do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, actually, no, sorry. I, I'm thinking about the opposite way. But uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it's like if the present state is zero, then the T to D conversion, it, you don't really change anything. There's T is zero, then D is zero. But if the present state is one, then you just invert the bit. Yeah. That makes sense. We did that, but we did that before yeah, in the yeah. previous example. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then it's similar for J and K, where uh, it, the present it's state if it's like one, yeah. then it's the you invert it, and then if it's zero, then you don't invert it. But it, the when you change the present state, you also have to change the do don't cares. But I see. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll try. Yeah, we'll do it like that for sure for the for the converting from um, what's it called the T flip flop to the D flip flop. Um, so. My next state entirely in D flip flops now, so that means I can draw D one. Yeah, so I can draw next state with D flip flops. Next state with just D flip flops. So it's going to be. Well, I didn't need that much space, but W equals zero. W equals one. I'll divide it right right there, whatever. Um, and this is going to be D two D one. D two. D1. So um, D1 doesn't change. 0, 0, 0, 0. Yep. And um, the same thing here. 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. So then from here, we want to do uh, the D2 value. So we're just going to convert from T to D. And so let's take a look at the table to be able to do, to be able to do this. So we are going from present state, present state, T should get zero. So if your present state is zero, T flip flop is zero, D flip flop would be zero. So nothing going on there too crazy. So um, we're only gonna look at Y2 in this case, only looking at Y2. So zero, zero gets zero. And that's because zero, zero gets zero. Okay, so this is what I put there going to color code things here to help out a little bit with the understanding so that zero is that zero and then that zero is that zero okay so hopefully that makes sense then here we're going to have okay zero zero also gets zero one one also gets zero oh sorry one 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 also gets zero okay and then one one also gets zero so we just get entirely zeros on that one So um, that's that's that great, and then D two. When W equals one, it's going to be comparing here like this now. So 
zero, zero, again, zero, zero gets zero, zero, one. Okay, let's see, zero, one gets one in this case, like that. Uh, yeah, I didn't fill it in, but yeah. Um, and then one, zero, one, zero gets one. Okay. And then one, zero, same thing, gets one, like that. There we go. So that's what it is with the D flip flops. And so we can derive some formula for it now. Uh, Z, Z we don't have to change yet. Okay. <laughs> so then D2 equals zero. D1 equals zero. And there's nothing really else to say there. Um, D2, sorry, uh, that's not true. <laughs> D2 equals D2 equals, yes, okay, sorry. There's, I have to account for something more here. Right. I thought why did I do that so fast? What did I what was I thinking this was the same? Sorry, as? why are we making equations now? Can't we just go to the state? Oh diagram? yeah, you're right. So I thought we were going to make the circuit. That's why I thought that's why I was making equations. Because I thought we were gonna make the circuit. Um but yeah. Okay, we could we could also make the circuit. Oh no, we know the circuit. <laughs> we have the circuit here. Uh this is with different flip flops, but that's fine. Same circuit. So we can make the state diagram now, yeah. So uh we have four states, so I will say A, B. C, D. Um, this is zero zero. This is zero one. This is one zero. This is one one. Uh, and then the output entirely depends on here. So I'm just gonna say z equals zero, z equals zero, z equals zero, z equals one. Right? Zero 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 one. From here, we just look at what's the next state. So um, uh, when w equals zero, you always go to one to a. I mean, right? So when w equals zero, you always go there. Okay, w equals zero, like that. Then from here, um, let's take a look at each state now. What if w equals one, right? So if you're in state zero and w equals one, then you go to zero, one, which is state B, right? So you go like that, w equals one. If you are in state B and w equals one, you go to one, zero, which is state C, or state, yeah, state C. So you're going to actually go like that, w equals one. Then if you are in state C and W equals one, you're going to go to state D, right? W equals one. And then if you are in state D and W equals one, you stay in state D. Okay. And there's your state diagram. Okay, there we go. So we have that. And so we could have also con converted this. Well, could we have converted it to JK flip-flops? both of them to JK flip-flops if we wanted to. Yeah, why couldn't we? We could, yes. You could have, but then could've. you can't draw the state diagram. Yeah, you can't draw the state diagram. I'm just trying to think, yeah, could, would we be able to? Yeah, we, of course we could have. We just have a lot more variables to deal with, but yes, we would have. Okay, well, that's pretty much our time for today's 8, 8.17. So that's pretty much the time we got. So that's all the content. That's all the, that's the last main question I wanted to go through. I'm happy we did one with different flip-flops. So you see that we just make different chart columns here. Um, but if we convert convert to JK, well, the state diagrams are essentially based on the D flip flop ones, right? Um, because it's essentially saying the the next state variables are going to be literally the next state, like the next the present the present state in the next clock. Okay. So that's the property of the D flip flops, is that the data just goes through, right? Okay, so if we make a state diagram for any given circuit, the table must be for D flip-flops, yes. No problem, no problem. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you for the help in a lot of those questions, right? There's some difficult questions, especially that middle one there. Um, and these notes are being posted, yes. I will send these to Christine, and she will do something with them. I don't know. She will post them somewhere. I'm not really sure where, but I will post these notes in Tutor Announcements on the server, and um, I will upload the video too thank you everybody for coming i appreciate that have a good night everybody i hope it was helpful and yeah if you have any more questions i'll be here for just a few more minutes if anybody has any more questions but other than that this is everything oh, for today yeah you said you're gonna post them on the server like a discord server yeah like tutor tutor yeah like syE oh could you post that link in the in the chat? sure yes sure
Okay, there we go. So click that. Oh, sorry. Click that. There we go. So you can go ahead and click that. All right, thanks. No problem. Okay. There we go. Yes, no problem for the notes. Yes, hope that's helpful. Again, you can go. Obviously, probably another website, but let's go back up here. There's the website. I'll be here for a few more minutes. If any more questions, let me know. Okay. Um, my question is, uh, you know how when they like, like let's say you say uh, something is a modulus three counter, right? Uh, that means it in binary, it's gonna go zero, one, two, and then it's gonna reset, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. That's a modulus three counter. Okay. And then zeros. Is that good? Oops. Okay. Wait for two more minutes. Maybe I'll just I'll stop I'll stop the recording. Is there anything? Still recording. <laughs> 